All right, everybody, let's talk about Lesson 7. Lesson 7 is super important because Lesson 7 is what introduces you to sprites. So taking a quick look here, Lesson 7 has 12 levels, and actually two of the levels in Lesson 7 are counted as assessment levels. So let's get started with Lesson 7. So your overview question of the day is how can we use sprites to help us keep track of lots of information in our programs? Remember that that question of the day is also your Flipgrid exit ticket question, so don't forget to do those. Each Flipgrid is worth two points. Each lesson is worth 10 points. Okay. All right. So we're going to be looking at three new vocab words. We've got dot notation. That's the way the sprites properties are used in Game Lab by connecting the sprite and the property with a dot. Um, a property is a label for a characteristic of a sprite, such as its location or its appearance. And then the sprite is a character on the screen with properties that describe the location, movement, and the look. The two new pieces of code you're going to master in this lesson is the draw sprites code. It's going to be a yellow block, and the placement of that yellow block is going to be super, super important. And then we're going to master the variable sprite block. So you're going to see that var, V-A-R, sprite, gets, create sprite a lot in this lesson and all of the lessons after this. So let's get going. All right, so this program uses some new blocks that you haven't seen before. Here's what you have to do um, with your partner. Well, obviously quarantine times, no partners, but think in your head, um, read the code and discuss with yourself how you think it's gonna work. Change some lines to see what happens. What do you think each line is doing? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit run. All right, I got an apple and I got a carrot. So let's look here. We've got line one, variable fruit, gets, create sprite. That's at the 100, 200 mark. That's 100 X, 200 Y. Yep, that makes sense. Then here's this dot notation that they just mentioned. Fruit, now that's the label we just created up here for our variable. Fruit dot set animation to apple. Apple is the picture. So what we've done here is we created a variable with line one. We labeled it fruit. Then we used that label fruit and tied it to an actual picture. And this happens to be a picture of an apple. Same thing down here with line three and four. We've got the variable vegetable gets a sprite at 300, 200. And then that label variable uh, vegetable sets the animation to the carrot picture. And all that's wrapped up with that draw sprites block at the very end. Let's hit finish and keep going. So many dings and noises. Oh my gosh. All right, so we got a video to consider. As always, do not ever skip these videos. They're super duper important. So here we go. If you want to animate a single shape in Game Lab, you can quickly end up with a lot of variables to manage. You'll need one to store the shape's X position, one to store the Y position, one for width, one for height, and as you add fills, strokes, and other characteristics, you'll need even more variables. If you want to animate additional shapes, you'll need to create a whole other set of variables. All this can quickly lead to problems with organization and clarity in your code. So what's an elegant and manageable way to keep track of all these variables? The solution? is to start animating with sprites. Think of a sprite like a character that lives inside your animations. At first, a sprite will pretty much just be a rectangle. But the beauty of a sprite is what it has going on behind the scenes. When you make a sprite, it comes with properties, which are variables that store the characteristics of a sprite. Properties describe things like where the sprite's located on the screen, what it looks like, and what color it is. To create a new sprite, use the create sprite command. You can assign your sprite a label, just like you would a variable. This code is creating a new sprite and giving it the label my sprite. But you can label it anything you'd like. Just like shapes, sprites need to be drawn to the screen. Use the draw sprites command to see your sprite appear in the display area. You can control a sprite's properties in your program by using dot notation. First, connect the label of the sprite to the label of the property with a dot. 
Now we can use this just like a variable. So for example, my sprite.x gets 200, we'll update the sprite's x location to 200. And my sprite.width gets 50, we'll update the sprite's width to 50. The next time you call draw sprites, these new property values will be used to draw the sprite. Sprites can have tons of properties. As you get familiar with them, they'll give you powerful controls over what your sprites look like and can do. All right, so let's get to coding. So in level four, we're going to create sprites with a variable sprite. Um, the default name is always going to be sprite, so you'll want to change it to something a little bit more meaningful to you. So sprites only appear on the screen when you draw them there. That yellow uh, draw sprite block will draw all the sprites that you've created on the screen that are listed above that block. So remember, you drop that yellow draw sprites block and everything above it will be drawn. Anything below it will be ignored because the computer reads the line one, or the code one line at a time. All right, so here's what we have to do. This program includes comments that let you know uh, where to place your code and otherwise it is blank. Oops, I should probably start over. Look at me, I'm making all kinds of mistakes today. It's a crazy day for me. Sorry about that, folks. All right, so we're gonna run this program. Uh, actually, we're gonna create this program. So we're gonna add a variable sprite under the comment create sprite. Um, we're going to ignore the yellow triangles for now. That part's coming up later, and I promise you it's going to be the bomb. Mwah! It's going to be great. We're going to add a draw sprites block underneath the comment drawing, and then we're going to run the code to see what happens. So first, I'm going to go to the sprites drawer. So remember, we got our toolbox here, and we got two drawers now, world and sprites. I'm going to grab this draw sprites, or I'm sorry, this variable sprites, and I'm going to drop it there in line two. Okay, so variable sprite. Um, I could change the name at this point if I wanted to. I'm not necessarily because we're just practicing. Going to go into the world drawer. Going to grab this draw sprites. That's the yellow block. Drop it, drop it at the bottom. Hit the run button. And bam. We just made a square show up in the game lab screen. How amazeballs is that? Okay. So remember, sprites are drawn from the center. All right. Um, before we learned that squares and rectangles are drawn from the top left corner, but whenever you're creating a sprite, that sprite is always drawn from the center of the object. So because it says call sprite 20 at 200, 200, 200, 200 is right there in the middle of the screen. Okay. All right. Hit finish and let's get going because there is definitely more fun stuff to come. We'll get out of this block business and actually make some cool stuff. Check my time. Okay. All right. Probably should reset. Sorry. I actually emailed code.org and they're going to, they're looking into creating a one teacher reset all levels button just for me. All right, this program should create two new sprites, one on the left and one on the right, but it's only drawn one. You don't need to add any code on this one. Just rearrange the code already present so that you can make sure that both sprites show up on the screen. So you remember when I told you that the placement of that yellow sprite block, draw sprite block is very important. This is a, uh, an example of why, okay? So I got one block, according to my image over here to the side, I should have two. Let's look at the code and see what's wrong. So I got a first variable, okay, uh-oh. Next, I got that draw sprite block. Hmm, the computer only reads the code one line at a time in order. Therefore, the computer sees that and goes, oh, draw that sprite. And it gets to the next block and it goes, okay, what next? So in order to make two blocks show up, I'm gonna grab that level two, or I'm going to grab number three, either way, and I'm going to drag them around and reorder. So now I have both variables, line one and line two, followed up at the end with that draw sprites block. Let's hit reset and run and see what happens. There it is. Level's done. Let's hit finish. Da -da -da. Boy, we're making good time today, everybody. Making great time today. All right, don't forget, you can always pause me and, and do what you need to do and then come back and hit replay, okay? All right, so version history, reset my version. You see how many times I've done this. This is why I'm making a recording. 
doing this a lot lately. Okay, so we're going to add animations. This program draws four sprites on the screen, and one of them has an animation for the animation tab. Woo, the animation tab, you're going to love it. We're going to run the code to see what happens. We're going to look in the animation tab to see what animation is available to us. We're going to alter them. We're going to play around with them. And we're going to use some set animation commands to change the look of these sprites. So first, it's like Christmas. Let's hit run and see what happens. Ooh, baby. No more boring gray blocks anymore. We've got a pink alien on the screen. How did they do that? Well, let's take a look. They've actually created four variables. They've named them all. Top left sprite, top right sprite, bottom left, bottom right sprite. That means these blocks, okay, and this dude is this, one through four. Line five is different. Line five says bottom right sprite, okay, so that's the fourth sprite they created. Set animation to alien. So remember what I told you a couple levels ago? I said the variable, you assign a label to the variable, and then you assign an image to the label. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Like we're taping them all together. So how do I get more pictures? Follow my mouse up to this animation tab right up here, folks. All right, so we got code, we got animation. I'm gonna click that animation tab. Look at all this. Okay, so there's where the alien came from. They've got us a bunny, a flybot, and a plane. But hey, I'm here to tell you that's not the end of your options. I'm gonna click this plus symbol down here at the bottom. Booyah, look at all of these library drawers that I have. Animals, backgrounds, characters, environment, food, gameplay, vehicles, I don't know what all is, but it looks great. Tools, obstacles, music, general terms, and if that isn't enough, you can upload your own image, okay? Upload your own image from anything you got saved on your device, and if you don't have nothing saved on your device, what's this picture? Oh, how cool! I'm going to use this. I'm going to use it. Okay, I'm going to hit open. Let's see if it lets me. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's too big. Okay, so keep track of that whenever you find images. They do have to match a certain size. So I'm just going to cheat here. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit the animals button. And hey, let's add a B. Why not? Okay, so there's a B. And if that wasn't enough, then I can actually alter things. I can erase stuff. I can add stuff. I can even draw my own animation. So that's enough about animations because I know I've done lost you. You're in heaven right now. You're finding all kinds of sprites, but I'm going to go back to the code side of things and set up some code for these other variables. So just to show you how it's done, I'm going to do one. So first I'm going to grab this sprite.animation label, drag it over, and I'm going to put it underneath variable in line three. I do this because I like to keep things together. Um, it helps my brain keep track. So the first thing I've do is got to change that label to from sprite to bottom left sprite. Bottom, capital left, capital sprite. And the next thing I'm going to do is in this drop down menu, I'm going to click it. And bam, all those sprites we saw in the animation drawer, they're all right here. So I can pick any one I want. So I'm going to hit B. I'm going to hit run. And there's my B, y'all. Just like that. Easy peasy, Japanesey. Hardest part of this, one, remembering to change your labels. Labels matter, folks, and so do capitalization, and so do lowercase, and make sure you follow those rules for labels. Remember, three rules. One, labels can't have spaces. Two, labels can't start with a number. Three, capitalization is important. Make sure it matches. All right, I'm going to hit finish because there's a video coming up. I know you're probably still stuck on the, on the animations drawer and you're looking. That's fine. You can listen to this video. It's super important. <laughs> Questions to consider. Hi, I'm Aston Motes, and I was the first software engineer hired at Dropbox. I also work with an organization called Dev Color. DevColor is a nonprofit that advances the careers of black software engineers. Sprites make it much easier to organize your code, but visually, they're still just rectangles. To make our creations come to life, we'll want to add images to our sprites. We'll start with a simple program you've seen before that creates a single rectangular sprite. Before we can turn this rectangle into something more fun, 
we need to tell Game Lab about the image we want to use. All images and drawings you add to your project are created and managed in the animation tab. To switch back and forth between your code and the animations, use a toggle in the upper left corner. To add a new animation, click the plus sign. This will open a library of images that are already built into Game Lab. From the library, you can browse the categories to find what you're looking for. Once you've selected an image, it'll be added to your project and shown on the left. If you like, you can also change the name of your image. So here we've added an image in the animation tab and we have code that creates a basic sprite. Now we'll need to put those two together and tell the computer that we want this particular sprite. We'll use the set animation block to do this. First, we'll use the name of our sprite and the name of the image we selected in the animation tab. Now when we run our program, the sprite will be drawn with the image we selected. All of the sprite's properties can still be modified as usual to do things like moving across the screen. You're not limited to the images that come built into Game Lab. You can also choose to upload an image from your computer or draw something yourself. In fact, you can edit any image in the animation tab using the pixel editor. Using the different commands in the pixel editor, you can easily draw, erase, or modify images. To adjust the dimensions of an image, just make changes in the menu on the right side. It's also just one click to flip your image to face the opposite direction. If you like an image you've made but want to make some changes, just make a copy. There are lots of helpful little tools in the pixel editor. Play around with them on your own and see what they do. Back in your code, the dropdown of animations makes it easy to pick which animation your sprite should use until you find the perfect look. Adding images or your own drawings to sprites lets you unleash your creativity and make your programs really your own. Let's get to it. I'm so excited. This is one of my favorite levels. I also like number 12, but you got to master le no, level 7, lesson 7 before you get there. All right, let me reset this one. Remember what I told you about order? We learned about order, and it's important in a couple levels. Um, couple lessons ago. Sorry, I'm mixing my words up today. So order super important as well when you're dealing with sprites. So here's what we got to do. We got to run the code to see what happens. We got to fix the two problems in the code. And here's the hint. Just like shapes, sprites are drawn in order that they are created. So I'm hit that run button and we got all kind of jacked up picture here. Let's take a look at the picture on the right. We should have a pop can, an ice cream cone, and get ready is across the front. Right now what we've got is get ready is at the back. We got a gray block where there should be an ice cream cone, and we got an ice cream cone where there should be a pop. So let's take a look at what they got going on here. Well, remember, I told you the order of your code is important. So whatever's drawn or written first is going to show up behind everything else. So the first thing they've got written is the message. Hmm, that can't be. So we've got to move both lines one and two down below line six. So did you see what he did there before? He like did this highlight, then he did like command C for copy, and then he went down here. Let me see if I can do this. I'm on camera. Watch me jack this up. Whoops. Like I said, watch me jack this up. I just jacked it up. All right. Sorry about that, folks. So let's just do it this way. I'm going to click. I'm going to drag. I'm going to click up here. I'm going to drag. And as always, whenever you make a change, hit reset and run and see what happens. Don't make too many changes before you check on what's going on. Otherwise, you could end up with a hot mess. Okay? So we got get ready on the front. Get ready's on the front. That's exactly what we wanted. But now we got to figure out what in the world's going on with our pop and our ice cream. So this comes down to labels, y'all. Remember when I said labels are important and you got to match your labels? So let's take a look at line three. It's got this big yellow triangle that tells us, hey, something isn't right with line three. So it says variable dessert gets Sprite. That makes sense. That's what we want. But the next line below it says drink dot set animation to ice cream. What? That shouldn't say drink. That should say dessert. So let me look up here and see what happened. That's variable drink. That makes sense. And then line two says drink dot set animation to soda. 
huh. So what we did is we ended up using the same label twice to call it to two different pictures. And the computer went, well, I don't know what you want. So line four, I need to change that label to match line three. So I'm going to change the word drink to dessert. Now we've got one drink, one dessert. I'm going to hit reset. I'm going to run. Boom. That's how you do lesson eight or level eight. Once you got that, you hit finish. Life is good. Life is grand. All right. I'm going to not click continue, and here's why. I've noticed that with the assessment levels, if I have already completed them, I can't uncomplete them. And I don't want to show you some answers. <laughs> so here's what's happening. You're going to advance over to level nine. It's a skill building activity. It's all about placement of that draw label, that yellow draw sprites. Wherever that sucker's placed in your line of code, everything above it will be drawn, nothing below it. You've got to figure out the order that those blocks are supposed to be in. So I'm going to jump over to lesson 10, or level 10, sorry, level 10 of lesson 7, level 10. As always, remember when you have a practice level like this, you are free to choose any one of these you want. If you want to do all of them, I'll give you a bonus point for each extra one you do. But at bare minimum, in order to get your total point value of 10, you got to do at least one. Okay, so I'm not going to go through them all. I don't want this video to be like 75 million years long. You choose one, you do the best you can, you get her done, and we move on. Okay, the next bubble up, lesson 11, that is another assessment level. Once again, I'm not going to click on it because I don't want to give away any, any juicy details. I want you to try your best on level 11. That is the second part of your grade for this one. And then finally, last but not least, the best part ever, I think, in my opinion, is level 12. So level 12 is an extension activity, just like the other uh, practice level. You've got three choices. Choose one. If you want to do more than one, that's great. That's up to you. I, I think that's awesome. So choose one, do your thing, and once you're done with lesson seven, you're free to roll right on into lesson eight. All right. Don't forget about that flip grid. Flip grid's worth two points piece. Each one is an exit ticket. You got one flip grid per lesson, okay? See you later.